Uh, uh, well, it's an honor to be able to uh, participate in this symposium and to confront uh, and respond to the uh, hypothesis of uh, this larger symposium, uh, which itself is in, in some ways an approach to an interesting problem, how to do the history of contemporary art in China, what hypotheses, what philosophies are available for us to try to understand uh, this incredible and exciting uh, movement. Uh, so I think that the three world hypotheses, that there's a, a classical or literati segment, a socialist or idealist segment, and then a global contemporary segment, and that this and the combination of these three segments is what is specific about the situation of Chinese contemporary art and something that might allow this art to serve as a kind of laboratory for new thinking or new ideas about art in general uh, and in the Western world. I think that this hypothesis uh, uh, coming as an external but interested non-expert uh, strikes me as a very fertile idea. And so the question is how to interpret and develop it, and I, that's the object, I guess, of this symposium. Uh, in New York, uh, we've just had an exhibition called Ink Art, uh, and it seems to me it has a problem of looking at only or focusing only one of the three worlds, the traditional literati world, and second, to associate that world with only one feature, ink. Uh, so, uh, uh, whereas it seems to me that many of the artists in that exhibition are involved in all three worlds, and also more generally in what was called the experimental ink uh, art movements. So, um, uh, I think the three world hypothesis is one that, that helps us to overcome these difficulties. Um, so, uh, Professor Hartley, uh, uh, along with um, uh, Johnson and Gao Ximing, has uh, started things off with what might be called the institutional interpretation of the three world hypothesis. So my uh, response is a little bit uh, uh, with respect to that uh, and has several aspects. Uh, the first uh, has to do with the institutional theory of art itself and how it's applied to this uh, three worlds. Uh, and then how this general problem can be connected to the history of contemporary art in China. Uh, so I think uh, the word art world in the three art worlds, as it were, builds into the, the idea of this institutional theory already. Uh, Arthur Danto, uh, uh, that Johann Hartley uh, <coughs> referred to, uh, he, he sort of had this idea that this Duchampian or Warholian question, what is art, is answered by whatever the art world says is art. So uh, in New York, we have some doubt about Arthur Danto's theory. Uh, and uh, we uh, wonder whether it's possible for any art world to completely determine or answer the question, what is art? On the contrary, we tend to think there's an aspect of art that's recalcitrant or irreducible to any institutionalization. And uh, it seems to me that this uh, problem uh, uh, fits uh, uh, to this uh, uh, case of the three art worlds in China. Uh, I think if you look at the actual exhibition, many of the idiosyncrasies uh, uh, are found in each individual artist who, as it were, is combining, I'm sorry, or connecting the, the, the three worlds in, 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 in interesting ways, such that they overlap in, in many of the different works. Um, so uh, uh, I would agree that there's, it's a deficiency of global art discourse of the type that's proposed by Hans Belting to lack specificity. Uh, uh, but um, uh, we can all uh, uh, 
uh, I agree that there's uh, a certain kind of homogeneity that's, that's imposed and that the Chinese contemporary arts uh, experience very different, let's say, than the African uh, 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 experience. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I think there's another sense of the lack of specificity um, which happens when new forces or new situations arise for which we don't have specifying categories. And in those situations, the, the, the uh, problem and the intellectual uh, challenge is to invent new categories and to rethink a little bit the, the situation. And there's a way in which art and thinking works very well in this zone, which is why it's very interesting to look at in detail at individual works, talk to individual artists, and so forth. It's what I would call the undisciplined uh, uh, aspect of art. And uh, in uh, uh, theories uh, 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 on this topic, I'd be a little bit um, less inclined to go to Pierre Bourdieu and Arthur Danto, a little bit more with the polemic that Jacques Concierge had some time ago with Bourdieu himself, in which he said that calling Bourdieu the sociologist king, as though sociology could interpret and explain everything, uh, he said that uh, the history of modern art in particular is such that the habits or the institutional forms that, that uh, the, uh, always have an outside, always have something outside it, such that it's impossible to completely institutionalize art. Uh, and so uh, it's this problem that seems to me to uh, be a question, at least, for the sociological interpretation of the three-world hypothesis, as though there were three floating institutional blocks existing in parallel, having developed in sequence. And on the contrary, I think we need a, a, a theory in which we can see in each individual artistic itinerary fissures and displacements and, and connections. Um, so my worry is a little bit that this institutional theory will prevent an eventual global art history which involves the specificity of China. Um, uh, Professor Hartley talked a little bit about the problem of medium, but uh, I think, um, you know, depends a little bit how you define medium. We've had a, quite a uh, debate about this problem of medium. But if we count, let's say, book or word as, as a medium, we find something that's very specific to China because in the traditional uh, a segment, this problem, word, image, uh, writing, uh, 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 poetry and image, uh, uh, is such an important part, such that the connection with this earlier segment is very rich in a way that you don't find, let's say, in African art. So there's something in the very definition of medium itself that, that seems to be a problem in this larger institutional uh, uh, theory. And so I would say while it's true, or if it's true, that the artifacts of these three segments are now collected and displayed and talked about in academic institutions, each in different ways, we need to reserve a zone of creative interaction, intersection in the, uh, between the three in order to have a good theory of the specificity of contemporary art. Uh, so um, uh, I think in particular in this case of uh, uh, the contemporary, the three segments, uh, I think in all three segments uh, you find um, not simply many times, uh, but also and especially for the last two segments, very specific sorts of relationship with us in the West. Because uh, uh, we shouldn't think that the history of contemporary art in China 
is cut off uh, uh, from the West. On the contrary, it's been involved in a long and very interesting negotiation. One of the elements, I think, in all three worlds is the relationship to the West and this larger political problem, counter-hegemonic art, is being transformed by the new relationship of wealth and labor and power and so forth in the New Asia, which is the condition of our discussion here today. So um, um, just by way of conclusion, uh, I think it would be interesting to include in our larger account something that's outside the institutional uh, issue itself and the use of that outside element to better understand what's specific and what the potential of contemporary art in China is today. Okay.